there's like zero, there were two laser cutters that worked at the school last year. There are no laser cutters that worked at the school last year. There are no laser cutters that worked at the school last year. All right. So remember I told you don't pull the clouds out of your butt, right? I'm going to pull the clouds out of my butt. So. Huh? Yes. Yes. And um, there was some confusion. I was talking to another student. This is a brand brush called Baker. Yep. There's also brushes you can get that were Baker's brushes. And I think they still sell some Baker's brushes. And they're for putting butter and glaze on donuts. They actually can be pretty damn cool brushes. So they're worth taking a look for um, from Baker's supplies, restaurant supply stores. You might actually find some cool brushes. So don't get, but this was a brand of brush called Baker. So, and there was some confusion. I was talking to a student recently about that. And they were like, where do I get? And I was like, oh, okay, I understand your confusion. So I'm going to choose this first lighter color. Now, remember, this also comes from 30 years or so of having painted clouds, looked at clouds, thought about clouds, as I pull this cloud out of my tuchus, okay? So when I say be careful about pulling a cloud out of your tuchus, yes, be careful about pulling a cloud out of your tuchus, but Like, one of those days where nothing just. Oh. I don't want my edges to get wet, so I'm just going to give them a little spritz. What? My flash was on, and I was like, that's another mirror. Going paparazzi mode. No, I didn't have any of you in it.
Thank you. Right. So as I get farther down to the clouds that are farther away, I'm also going to lighten up. Not going to have as much value difference in those clouds as I do in the clouds that are closer to me, the clouds that are higher. In this case, yes. Remember a little bit of like what you like about what works for doing marble, works for doing clouds. You can like, go, eh, I don't kind of like what I did there. And you can mush it. Mm -hmm. 
give it a spritz. Let it get melty. This is a lighter color. Are you treating like the bottom edge and the top edge kind of like how you would like a cylinder? Like you don't take the shade or the highlight all the way to that edge? Yes. Yeah, you can see how I'm not taking the highlight all the way up. And now, and then I'll do my ombre blend in my sky. And we're going to do that too. Yes. So, it's just you're going to back into the clouds. Okay. So the only problem is that now it's super, super wet. So we can put batting on it. And see what happens. You do have like one minute left in class. Right. <laughs> so there is that. So you can see I've painted the clouds. I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll do the batting and masking. Right. And um, you'll be able to see it after, which is just going to be straight up. I'm going to lay the batting over my clouds and mask them out, and then I'm going to spray it dark at the top down to light at the bottom, basically using the colors that I have on the cart. Um, for the sprayer, are you going to use a dark sprayer? Yep. Nothing, nothing crazy. Yep. Nothing crazy. You know, and if you're feeling really, really cheeky,
get most of the paint off this brush. If you're feeling super, super cheeky, because we do have some of this lovely salmon color on the cart. You can screw around with it in your clouds a little bit. Okay, be careful of where your fan is blowing. Like if I had a fan that was blowing this way, it would be blowing my water in the wrong direction. Right now, I love the direction it's blowing the water, so I'm gonna like let it go, right? Because it's doing nice things. So I'm gonna like leave it be. But just be careful about where the water is blowing or where the fan is blowing your, your moist, your, your puddles, okay? Okay, so I'm putting batting on this now, and a lot of the batting pieces are pretty darn small, so I'm really literally just grabbing clumps of batting. I'm working it out to get the shape that I need. So it's pretty, it's pretty thick and a little silly, but that's okay. And I am just going to keep arranging these humongous wads of batting on this to fill in the shapes of clouds that I need until I have all of my cloud areas covered. Okay, so this is actually a little bit absurd because our box of batting has been torn down into ever smaller and smaller pieces. And so <laughs> what I had were all these tiny little pieces of batting, which actually made it very easy to find the silhouette of the clouds. But... It also ended up making it be a very thick batting mask. Normally when you do a batting mask, you do a batting mask that is relatively flat and it's out of one, maybe two overlapping 
layers of batting, and you weight it down with rocks or chain, there's no weighting this down. Like this is just mounds of batting, and it's very silly. So I'm going to do my sprays on top of this, and I'm going to spray it dark at the top, light at the bottom, mix the two sprays, and I'm not going to be able to weight it down, so I'm going to make sure that my sprays don't push the batting one way or the other as I spray. And then I can't really put a fan on it because I don't want to blow the batting one way or another, so I'm just going to let it dry. This is a very important point. If you all leave this part of your process to do the morning of our next studio, when you're working on doing the critique of your cloud technique, y'all are just going to have wads of wet batting sitting on your projects that you can't move yet. Just saying. So word to the wise, maybe think about getting this done the night before. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start doing my spray passes now. Starting with my lightest color, working up to my darkest color.
So I thin my paint to make sure that it goes through the sprayer well. And I have three shades, one of them being my base coat. I'm recording. Oh, it's okay. Give me just a few more minutes. Okay, last color. And it's a little sleazy, but going from the lightest color to the darkest color. I don't, as long as the colors are related, necessarily clean out my sprayer. But you always have to like make sure that you get the last color sprayed out of the supply tube. Remember to start on and off your canvas because of that little spit that the sprayer does. And there you go, have it. The spray is finished. Now we just have to let it dry. You can put a fan on it from a fair distance away. You just can't put a fan directly on it because you can blow your batting off because there's just no way to weight all of this batting down. And then I suppose you could put pieces of cardboard on it and weight the cardboard down if it was really necessary. But so we'll do one last reveal. And that will be Jenga. Okay, now it's time for the big video. Like I said, I didn't weigh any of this down with stone or stone.
Thank you.